Hello, hi, I'm Patricia McNeely. I am a Blu-ray Twin Flame and I'm in Chicago, Illinois. I'm going to emphasize that because lately I've had a few people say, oh, I didn't know you were in Chicago. Yes, I'm in Chicago. I'm in um, pretty much the metro area. So if you're in Chicago, send me a shout and uh, please know I'm going to have a live class coming up that I'm going to talk about. So in today's video, what I want to talk to you about is gender hating, which is a pretty sticky topic for a lot of us, for everybody really, as far as I am concerned. That's a hot button topic for everyone. And there's a lot of subtleties with it that people just don't realize and some of how it is popping out. However, people that are twin flames, you are the front runners in healing this stuff. And by healing, I mean completely getting rid of it. Not just glossing it over, not just, you know, thinking that, well, we'll sweep it under the rug yet again. Or, well, that's just a generational thing. Or, that's just a national thing. Or, that's just a traditional thing. It's not going to matter. Because when you're together, you are the same being. And so, men and women, regardless of whatever your sexual orientation is, will be healing this. Healing patterns, healing ancestral, healing tribal. And so I was inspired by a couple of songs here. And uh, one of them is this one. I kept, you know, kind of getting this song because I get songs as messages to let me know where things are at. That's just one of the multiple ways that I get it. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies. Now put your hands up, back in the club, out to the supper day. Right? And then it goes, if you liked it, you should have put a ring on it. If you liked me, then you should have put a ring on it. Exactly. And this is one of the things that you could say the feminine is up to here with. It's like, you know, you're, you're taking too long here. You're taking too long and you only show attention if someone else comes in. What is this dog in the manger attitude? If we like each other, then yeah, let's take it to the next level. If we don't like each other, or you don't really like me well enough, then yeah, set me free. Uh, let me be legit. Don't just come around because you don't want anyone else to have me. Don't be territorial or anything like that. And I got a song for the men too. What is love? Lady, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. What is love? Lady, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Oh, just give me a sign. What else can I say? It's up to you. I know we're one. Just me and you. I can't go on. What is love? Lady, don't hurt me. You get the general idea. So I'm not going to fully sing the song um, because there's some copyright questions out on YouTube. And I just want to honor those artists. The links are out there. But then I got a third song. And I think that's really indicative of what we need to do here and what I'm teaching. And all the stuff that pops up. Angers irrationality, the things that don't make sense, like how people's minds can twist things into making it an issue when it wasn't even an issue to begin with. How do these deal breakers come up with people? And it happens in every type of relationship, but especially in lover relationships. So as twin flames, this is not intended to impede you or trip you up or um, deter you. And I know there's a lot of people out there saying, you know, keep the faith. This takes more than faith. This actually takes not blind faith. It's actually seeing what's there, seeing what you don't want, and learning how to get rid of it because it will keep playing that whack-a-mole game with you. You know, where you get your armor on 
and you're just going boom, boom, whack this, whack that. What? Something else came up? Boom. Oh, that came up? Bam. Okay? But it makes people aggressive. It makes people hostile. It's exhausting. Okay? How many of you have felt this? You felt like you were having a cold in the past few days. Let me see if you can see that. Let me move this out of the bright sunlight. Bright, bright sunlight, which I'm very grateful for. Okay. Okay. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Oopsie. Okay. So, what do you do when you feel like you're having a cold? What is that? That's some kind of inflammation, right? What exactly is that doing? And people will say it's weird because it comes on very suddenly. You know, what kind of, what is it? A download, an upgrade? It's everything. It's everything because these things happen in your body because your head cannot support this stuff. Your head, your twin flame's head, everybody's heads cannot support this stuff. You might be liquefying everything. What does that look like? Sniffles, eye tearing, your tears are coming regardless of whatever you do. You're tired of it. Your gut. Everything goes out of your gut and you're saying, is it what I ate? Is it something I'm doing? Is this some weird ancestral thing? Yes, all of the above. But what do you do about it and how do you get healthy? Because you have your body, your twin flame has their body. Each person in the union has their own ancestry, their own ancestral things, their own patterns, their tribal stuff, all of the tribal garbage that has come up with people. It gets to be a hot mess. So how do you stop these things that are like a hot mess? Okay, you get busy with your body. You get busy learning your body, learning what to do, and joining my class, I'm going to have a two-part webinar on human transition out of the old paradigm and relationships. It's going to be in two parts. In each part, you're going to be towed along with what to do about this. What else happens? What is whacking you upside the head? Like, boom, this guy just got karmic two by four upside his head. No, nope, no more fighting. No more using those old ancient ways for handling your current modern day relationships. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't fly for twin flame people. Karmic balancing. Someone asked me about karmic balancing recently. What is karmic balancing? Well, in a nutshell... You might be getting a milder version of something that you dealt out in a past life. And it's not intended to deter you, and yet it's not something you can keep the faith about. This is happening especially for um, what I am seeing for people of different types of nationalities and ethnicities. There's a lot of karmic balancing going on. And it might be good stuff, but it also might be negative stuff where you feel like you're just in the spin cycle on it. And why do I have to do this again? Why is that person the same thing? Why are these people negative to me? You're getting pushed out of the fourth dimension big time. And it's time to get with it and understand that there are things that can help you sail over certain things. Your reproductive system cannot support some of these things either. It cannot support anger. You're very mistaken if you think that twin flame couples go and have angry sex. Anger and sacred sexual do not go together. But that does happen sometimes in people's karmic marriages. Sometimes the glue that sticks together is something that people aren't really sure what is holding them or tying them to this person. Again, usually it could be head, it could be the reproductive areas, it could be ancestral if they're from the same uh, origins, 
It can be tribal. Many times people are encouraged, stay within your tribe, stay with your own people. If you're going to get married or have a relationship, you'll get along better. And yes, that is true to a degree, but it's not always where the love is. And if it's arranged for the couple, sometimes there's just not love there. Sometimes you can learn to like each other. You're way past the point of learning to like each other. Okay, these are some of the things that wind up making people hate each other. So I have this other thing that I came across. Okay, notice in this picture here. Okay, a lovely circa 1950s, 1960s housewife. She has several modern conveniences. Look at, she has a coffee maker. Uh, she has a coffee maker here. She has a vacuum. The little boy has a toy telephone, so they probably have a telephone. They have an oven. She has a vacuum. You know, like she's she's got all the comforts at home. She's styling. She's good little Mrs. Susie homemaker. And everybody's happy. And when her husband comes home, he's happy too. Because he fought in World War II. And he's flipping tired. All he wants is to come home to some domestic bliss. And yet, if you take that into the modern day, women are sometimes doing the same thing. So this was actually a study done to find out how much housework do modern women do in comparison to their counterparts, their spouses or domestic partners, okay? And they depicted it with almost the same thing. She's got a Swiffer. She's got a Keurig. She's got an oven. The little boy is there. There's a dishwasher. That's an improvement. Who's loading the dishwasher? Well, maybe they'll train the little boy. Maybe he'll grumble. Maybe she'll smack him if he doesn't because she's frustrated with her life, or maybe not. Okay, some of you may have grown up in a house like that where you got a smack, you got a hit. It was your first lesson in how are women. Or maybe your dad hit you. Or maybe you're a girl that saw how your dad was. And you got a lesson in how are men in relationships. Now, this may seem ac very academic to people to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm aware of daddy issues. I'm aware of mommy issues. However, it goes deeper. It goes deeper to what I call the sins of the parents, which are the ancestral. Okay, so this is why a lot of the karmic balancing is coming up now. Why your reproductive area is going to literally seize up and you will have strange men menstrual cycles Men will have strange cycles of hormones and emotional cycles. And there's also these feminine emotional surges, okay, which can happen at a time that's other than the monthly time of the month. You know, so in the old way, you might say, why didn't you warn me that you were, you know, it was that time of your month? Oh, it never occurred to me. I grew up in a house with all girls. My dad would just go to the, he would just go bowling with the guys. We, I don't know. Oh my goodness. Do you even know how you are, how you put me on your roller coaster ride every single month and those headaches you get? My God, the headaches. Well, it's not my fault. God, it must really be hard to deal. I, I care so much about you, but I, it's hard for me to see you suffer. I just don't know how to deal with it. Well, how do you think I'm dealing with it? Well, you seem to take some of it out on me. Well, I'm not trying to. Do you understand? I'm not trying to do that. But for one week a month, you're almost not even yourself. And it's true. And this is how people cope in old paradigm things because the karma is not finished or balanced or closed. How do you put closure to it? How do you you know, deal with the things that come up with your body and not subject everyone around you to some of the stuff that you're really experiencing. This is a real experience. Can she genuinely say that her pain is worse than his? Maybe not, because he may have a different pain threshold, but his pain is his pain. He actually had a big fight with his father when he was little, and his father broke his rib. And... 
you know, he suffered some tremendous abuse that he had to keep to himself. Because who's he going to tell? Who's he going to tell? Okay. How do you get rid of these childhood injuries, the childhood issues, the inner child, the wounded child, and get better and get healthier when it comes to these kind of things so that any of these emotions leave you for being able to be with your man or your woman, regardless of whether you are gay, lesbian, trans, if, you, if you're bi, you're probably dealing with both sides. And I'm going to tell you, your twin is embodied in one person, one type of body. So that's actually something that is very tribal. The people who have the two energies, who can connect to the two energies. So have you been feeling that very strange fatigue and exhaustion? What's up with that? What is up with that? Well, if you've been running the marathon, you'd be tired and exhausted too. You'd probably like nothing better than for the twin flame to ride up on a white horse and whisk you away. Or have her come in and on her Valkyrie wings and fly you away. Whatever your fantasy is, whatever your fantastical way of getting raptured and away from things. But you actually have to address these things. And you're making uh, sure that these things are gone, that you have new tools using your light body in order to do this. You have a brand new twin flame body that isn't going to tolerate all of this. Anger? Do you think you're going to go carry around buckets and buckets of anger or let someone pummel it into you in some way, shape, or form? Heck no. Oh, hell no. Do you think that you're imagining this? Do you sometimes try to be really zen about your anger and you're like, well, it's irrationally for me to be angry. After all, that's not unconditional love. When are you going to realize that it's okay to feel your anger? You're just not supposed to feel the buckets and buckets and buckets and buckets of stuff that you've had to take it, take it, take it, take it, take it in your past lives. Not him, not her. Not him. Not her. And people of color have their own things that they're that are the buckets and buckets of stuff that they are, you know, has been their karma. It's a thing. It's not imaginary. We can't really say that, you know, any one particular group of people has not suffered from something because if you actually study history and you look at points on the map and you look at my map. And, you know, that I've had my map videos, you can see strategically, strategically, there are people in placement, there are twin flames in placement on purpose so that there is an alleviation of some of this stuff from the ancestry. Now, personally, when you start going through this part, okay, so you have a cold, okay, what if that feels like it's in your throat, your throat is swelling up? Doesn't your twin wanting to reach out and speak to you and then you get angry at them because they're not? That's not really what that is. That is you, you're the tissues of your body intending to merge and purge out stuff. So if you would like to know more about this and know what to do and learn some tools so that you can navigate your relationships using the template of 5D relationship, okay? Because you have a new body template, okay? All of these things are from the architecture and the old blueprint. You have a brand new blueprint. So, let's just get this where you can see it better, okay? There, that's better. Join me for my two-part webinar. It's one price, two parts. Gives you a lot of support, human transition and relationships, either on a Friday night, which works for West Coast, Australia. Um, it works for a lot of the areas in Asia, such as India, such as Japan. China hasn't reached out yet, although I do know Chinese people do watch the videos. 
They just can't really be free about it. I guess sharing is communism, but sharing is also caring too. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Human transition relationships, Friday night, if you're on the West Coast, Hawaii, New Zealand, Australia, India, Japan, Korea, anywhere there that you um, would catch it and it would make sense for you because it's your next morning. It's a Saturday morning. Sunday, Sunday, if you are in Israel, if you're in Greece, if you're in Spain, if you're in the UK, if you're in the EU, if you're in uh, Egypt, Kuwait, Jordan, I'm trying to think of countries, but uh, please forgive me if I didn't think of yours. I can't think of all of them. I need my map if I'm going to do that. So it's usually a great class. You're going to learn some tools to use using the new way. Not the old way. The new way is like, you don't need to be mean to me. I'm going to dispose and discard of that without any witchcraft, hexes, spell casting. You don't need to do that. It won't even work anymore. Don't even buy the stuff that's out there that people are saying like, cast a spell. Like, it is so not going to work. It is so old paradigm. It isn't even funny. It doesn't make a dent. You know where it only makes a dent? The fears that exist up here. Fear is the mind killer, but it's also the body killer because people stole their fears. And I'm here to take the fear out of this process for you. You may not see exactly what the future looks like. It's because you're creating it. You have to be able to line up to create it together. Whatever permutation are you in, this permutation, this permutation, okay? Whatever it is that is your own personal love union. And to even sweeten the pot even more, usually after these, people have these great, fabulous dreams at another level that I'm not in charge of. Their higher self gets them into it because that is something that is personal. You need to get up there to be able to see and feel and experience what this really is. What is the passion and get out of like words like, you know, what's the mission? You know, what's the, you know, why am I being treated like a piece of, uh, you know, just flesh or, you know, I'm more than that. I'm an angelic. I'm an angelic human, damn it. I'm worth more. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And wait, there's more. I have a class, it's my live class, where I will also be covering some of these topics and doing live body work October 26th and 27th. If you come to Chicago, that's also a great weekend where there's lots of Day of the Dead celebrations and different things to see because it's really close to Halloween. So it's usually a very lively weekend. You'll have your evening free to go check it out. Um... I would love to take a group of people downtown and show you around. So, you know, hopefully that could work out. I really can't guarantee that 100% at this point, but I would love to do that. And if you're not sure you want to have a one-on-one -on -one session, yes, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I do several types of them. Look for the links below. I highly recommend the causal body session. And please know that I'm here to help you with some of the areas that might be very baffling to you. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I look forward to hearing from you. I hope to see you in there. Look for the links below and have a great one. Okay. Last song. Do you remember there was a time? When people on the streets were walking hand in hand in hand. They used to talk about the weather, making plans together. Days will last forever. Come to me, cover me, hold me. Together we'll break these chains of love. Don't give up. There's your song. So don't give up. 
break the chains of love, come to my class and find out how. How to break all these old patterns. Bye.